Manhunt, Rockstar's most controversial game series. These two games will forever live in infamy among gaming journalists and the media as a whole, acting as a sort of black sheep for a game studio known for making contentious and controversial games. But what was it about Manhunt that made it so different, so disturbing and violent, so grotesque that even when compared to something like Grand Theft Auto, it's not even close? To the point that even some of Rockstar's own employees felt gross playing their own game. Well, we're going to dive into that here today, and look at content that even for these two games, which are renowned for their violence and disturbing material, had to be cut. So then, let's take a look at the lost and cut content of Manhunt. Now before I get to talking about the various cut material from both games, I'll give a quick rundown of the Manhunt games and what they're really all about. But don't worry, I won't get into any story spoilers, so if you're able and you feel like you won't be too disturbed by these games, I definitely recommend playing them, as I think they're some of Rockstar's most underrated games. Now Manhunt, to sum it all up, is basically a stealth horror game. But to be more specific, it involves the player taking on many enemies that typically belong to a group of hunters or gangs, with different hunters having their own unique quirks and appearing in different levels throughout the games. However, you have to utilize stealth and shadows to execute these enemies one at a time, or else if you try to take them on all at once, well, it typically won't end well for you, as most of them are well armed and hand-to-hand -hand fights in this game are not easily won. And so, the main objective is to execute them stealthily. However, this is where Manhunt's most gruesome feature comes in, with the various executions that can be done which get progressively more violent as the player holds down the button. Having different disturbing executions for each weapon, even rewarding the player with feedback from characters that follow your exploits in the games. As well as by giving you a higher score as you play. But that's enough preamble, let's get into the cut content from Manhunt 1. Now through the various versions of this game, there's many minor differences such as tattoos being changed, some additional text here and there, things like that. But that's not very interesting compared to the other differences. First of all, James Earl Cash, the protagonist, had a completely different look, sporting this model. Now as for hunters and other characters, there were quite a few that were cut, such as a gang called the Clowns, which had a bunch of disturbing variants as seen in this concept art. The gang would have been seen donning clown face paint as well as blue shirts with red ties. With the first clown on this concept art also bearing an eerie resemblance to real life serial killer John Wayne Gacy, who used a very similar style of face paint. The clowns were also apparently going to be the final hunters that the player would encounter in the game, and were also said to have a rivalry with a similar gang found in the game called the Smileys. Also related to this gang was a cut character named James W. Gacy, yeah not very subtle, and he would have acted as the head of the Carcer City art galleries and museums, as well as been the so-called sponsor of the clowns. And it's also thought that maybe it was planned that there would be a level possibly featuring this gang as well as the character of James Gacy, as there is a large museum that can actually be found in Carcer City where the first game takes place. So it's thought that maybe there was a museum level that was also cut that could have featured the clowns. Next there was another cut gang called the Camheads, and these guys are very strange to say the least, and almost remind me of that lost creepypasta camera heads. Whenever I hear about that I just think of this cut gang from Manhunt. Anyways, well they're just like the name says, guys with cameras for heads. Now this was probably proposed as an idea because in the first game, the murders that you commit are being recorded for some sort of snuff film ring. So as an idea it makes sense that they would be equipped with cameras but on their heads? Like are they masks or how does this like even work? Or are they some like supernatural beings with cameras for heads or robots or something? Maybe it was cut because it didn't make too much sense and wouldn't fit the gritty realistic approach that Manhunt took. And of course all the murders get recorded regardless, so yeah, it would have been kind of pointless. Still it's a very interesting idea for Hunters. Interestingly enough though, in GTA Online there are a few references to this cut gang. Such as a playable arcade game called Camheads, 
which also features various other Manhunt gangs like the Hoods, Innocence, and even Cerberus. Another cut gang was called the Jury. However, they weren't as unique as the Camheads. Instead, the Jury was most likely just an early rendition of the Skins, another gang found in the game. As a lot of things were carried over, such as the iconic hockey masks. But unlike a lot of the other cut gangs in Manhunt, there is no bio explaining who they are or anything about them, really. They also most likely would have been the first gang, though, encountered in the game, as the first level, titled Born Again, was called Jury underscore Turf in the files. And other than a strange easter egg in GTA 4, where a random pedestrian can sometimes be seen wearing a shirt showing the initial design of a Jury gang member, there isn't much else known about the Jury. And for the last of the cut gangs, we have The Lost which would have been a group of hunters mostly consisting of homeless people wearing makeshift armor, utilizing various pieces of garbage as weapons, such as steel scrap, glass shards, and lead pipes. They were also probably planned to be in the junkyard sections of the game, although eventually the skins ended up fulfilling that role, which is probably why the Lost was eventually removed. Although the most interesting part about this gang is its leader, Binbag who may have acted as one of the game's boss fights at one point before being scrapped. And he has a pretty menacing design, having some sort of makeshift armor composed of trash bags and barbed wire, bearing two rusted knives as weapons. He is even described in his description as, quote, a fucking madman. So yeah, there's that. And it's also thought that he made it even farther into the development than Scarecrow, which, speaking of, there was another cut character called Scarecrow who I briefly talked about in my cut and unused video game content iceberg series, which if you haven't seen it yet, go check it out, link in the description. But I only really scratched the surface with talking about this guy. So Scarecrow was actually the former leader of the gang, the Smileys, before being ousted after the quote, Pigsy debacle. So now the Scarecrow, also known as Kenneth Jesperson, is now just a tramp, a homeless man living on the streets of Carcer City. And might I also add, his name is actually a reference to the real-life smiley face killer, Keith Jesperson. Now like the other tramp in Manhunt, Kenneth would have most likely acted similar until he put on his mask, which at some point he would then become the Scarecrow, and would begin wielding his axe. And I think if this was implemented as a mechanic, it would have been very interesting in the game. But of course, he was eventually cut, which is really a shame. But besides his standard design and bio, there was also a Halloween variant that was made showing him wearing a pumpkin on his head instead of his standard mask. Next we have the cut weapons, and boy was there a lot. But before we get into those, let me just give you a brief rundown of the weapon classes in Manhunt. So there are four main classes. The green weapons, which are single use and are lost upon executions, although they are the most quiet. Then there are blue weapons, which can be used multiple times and are mostly small firearms like pistols, as well as melee weapons. But of course, these are much louder. Then there are red class weapons, which are the big guns and melee weapons that are the strongest of the three classes, but are also consequently the loudest. Then lastly, there are yellow class weapons, which are also called lure items, as they are throwable items that make a lot of noise when thrown, and can be used to alert and lure enemies. So for green class weapons, a broken bottle as well as a rag were found, but as to how a rag would work with three separate executions, and only for a one-time use, uh, I guess you could use your imagination for that. For blue class, there's an ice pick which was actually found still in the game, complete with three executions and everything. It just can't be accessed through normal means, although it can be obtained through the debug menu. Next, there's a blowtorch, which was seen in the Lost Gang's artwork, which also has audio that was found for its executions, and yeah, they're pretty disturbing. <laughs> Apparently a lighter was also cut, don't really know how that would work. A tranquilizer pistol, a flashlight which was seen in the cutscene of the level Mouth of Madness, a hunting knife seen in War Dog's artwork, a drill which was merely a concept seen in the art of the Smileys, a taser which can be seen in the cutscene during the level Train to Kill, and a silenced light handgun. Now for red class weapons, there was a spiked bat which can still be obtained in the game, however it can only be done through a glitch. 
There was also a fire axe seen in various pieces of concept art, a cane, a colt commando, wooden plank, hockey stick, katana, and even a PSG-1 sniper rifle, as well as a silenced sniper rifle. For the yellow throwable class, there was originally going to be molotovs, grenades, tear gas, plastic bottles, firecrackers, cash, as in money I guess, and water bottles. So the yellow class was at some point meant to include throwables that could actually be used to kill hunters, although that was at some point changed and yellow class weapons simply became lures. There was even also going to be some different carryables such as tripwire and night vision goggles, which could have made the game pretty interesting. Although it might have ruined the dreary and depressing atmosphere that the game manages to project through its dark visuals. And that was the main cut and loss content from Manhunt 1. Now there is more to dive into here, but it's mostly more minor stuff, like different camera angles for executions, varying weapon and enemy placements, small text differences across versions, things like that. But these were the main pieces of cut content from Manhunt. So now, on to Manhunt 2. So Manhunt 2 might not have as much cut content, at least that we know of, but it definitely has some interesting things going on. Because with Manhunt 1, we know a lot of the things that were cut, such as the various gangs, characters, weapons, and potential boss fights, all of that stuff. But this game is a little bit more mysterious, and we don't quite know as much about the development process of this game, as well as what was lost along the way. But I will try to go through the most important and most interesting things. So to start off with Leo Casper, one of the game's two protagonists, he had a slightly different design and a notably different face. The Project Militia Hunters, instead of looking like a group of militized mercenaries, would have had a very similar look to Cerberus, the strongest group of hunters from the first game. Project Scientists were also planned to have a larger role, with there even being a cut sequence in the level Domestic Disturbance, in which Leo would command Danny, the other protagonist, to kill three of the scientists. Additionally, several character models from the Pervs gang were cut before release, although one of these models can be seen in the cutscene of the level Sexual Deviants. Apparently there were also planned to be female inmates at Dixmore Asylum during the first level. And lastly, a character by the name of Agent Prime was cut, along with an unknown environmental execution that would have been used on him sometime in the story. And it's been theorized by some that Agent Prime might actually be one of the watchdogs that kidnapped Danny in the level Origins. Which is probably where the execution would have taken place, although it is unknown what it would have involved as there are no animations or audio that were found. Speaking of cut executions, there were a bunch of environmental executions that were cut from Manhunt 2. Some of which have been restored using mods and I'll show you those, but be warned, they are pretty violent. So the only two that were fully restored were the vending machine execution Yeah, a surprisingly gruesome one and an environmental dumpster execution However, that's not the end of the list. There were many more planned environmental executions, most of which still have some audio from them. And let me tell you, the sound design in this game is way too good. Just hearing these executions is pretty sickening, even without visuals, and maybe even more so to be honest, with only your mind to envision what these could have been like. Anyway, those cut executions were an Aztec altar, a harvester, probably from the farm level, a prop, as in most likely a movie prop from the level broadcast interrupted. A barrier, broken window, wooden plank, fence pole, chair, sink, bathtub, and the Agent Prime one we already discussed. As well as a tombstone, television, window throw, hangman pole, as seen possibly in the 5 past high noon video, and a guillotine. So yeah, it looks like environmental executions were meant to play a much bigger role originally in Manhunt 2. But for whatever reason, probably to save time making the animations, as well as, you know, some of these were probably even too much for their standards, 
The game originally also even had three different executions for each gun, just like all the other weapons, some of which have also been found and restored, such as this one. Moving on to cut weapons then, there are plenty. Although most are just referenced in the files without any actual assets relating to them. Such as the ice pick, tranquilizer gun, meat cleaver, hammer, blackjack, knife. All weapons that were in the original Manhunt. Which may have been planned to make an appearance in the sequel. However, there are more interesting ones such as the hockey stick, chainsaw, newspaper which actually has been restored with all three executions. Then there were flowers? I guess, how do you kill someone with flowers in three different violent ways? Who knows, only Rockstar could come up with something like that. But then again, San Andreas did have flowers as a weapon, so there's that. And because why not, a milk bottle and an acid bottle were also cut. And even a camera, which might be one of the most subtly disturbing additions in my opinion. I mean, think about it. What would it have been used for? To take pictures of your crimes, your brutal executions? Something about that is just haunting to me. Or maybe somehow you would have killed people with it? But who really knows? Again, this is another thing that was included in San Andreas and might have just been left over from that. But of course I saved the best for last. There was actually a dildo weapon that was cut from Manhunt 2, and has since been fully restored including all three different executions with full animation and audio. And now finally, the levels. So originally in the files it was found that Manhunt was planned to have 21 levels, or episodes as they are known as internally. However, the game only has 15 levels, 16 if you include the alternate ending level. So what happened to the other levels then? Well, most of them are unknown as they are just simply labeled by their episode number. However, the order of the levels in the game were changed heavily throughout development, including the levels which actually made it into the game such as Domestic Disturbance being the third level originally, and Sexual Deviance being the fourth, with Red Light then somehow becoming the seventh level? It's all kind of jumbled around, but then again the story was probably very different. Like with the level Domestic Disturbance, which in the final game is level 14, not 3, and you play as Leo, not Danny as it was originally planned. There were also five planned bonus episodes, most likely similar to those featured in Manhunt 1, although these sadly were also cut. However, two of the cut main story missions are known at least by name, those being History Museum and Sorority House. History Museum would have been the original fifth level of the game, which most likely would have featured many of the cut environmental executions we talked about earlier. Next was Sorority House, which would have been the eighth level of the game. Now this level is pretty interesting, as there is a little bit of information about it, Although some of it that I've heard is kind of conflicting, but from what I could find it's thought that this mission would involve Danny rescuing a female student being held captive by the project, which may have even been his own daughter or an early version of the character Judy Sender. And apparently the level was also entered through a roof window, where most likely those environmental window executions might have taken place. And that is mostly it for the cut and lost content of Manhunt 1 and 2. Definitely some interesting things that were cut from both of these games. Some of which I definitely would have liked to see, especially all those levels that were cut from the second game, as well as all the interesting gangs that could have been in Manhunt 1. 
And if you're interested and think you can handle the violence and gore, I would say go check out these games if you can. Although they're kind of hard to find in a playable state nowadays, as the Steam version of Manhunt 1 doesn't really work without patches, and you can't even really buy Manhunt 2 on PC anymore, so yeah. Also, Rockstar, please make Manhunt 3, or Manhunt Definitive Editions. Okay, not like this, but you know what I mean. Remaster these games, please, and I will buy it. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. I'm Sourcebrew, and I'll see you guys next time.